Welcome to the winners, our last program for the season 1978 and our grand final edition. And a very special welcome to viewers in Britain through the BBC and also in New Zealand. The VFL Grand Final at the Melbourne Cricket Ground is one of the world's great sporting occasions. More than 100,000 spectators at the venue for the 1956 Olympic Games. And we hope that our new friends enjoy the pinnacle of Australian football. In the program we have the high spots of the Grand Final between Hawthorne and North Melbourne and interviews with the coaches David Parkin and Ron Barassi. And a little bit later we'll look at the mark of the year and the goal of the year. The meeting between Hawthorne and North Melbourne is a fitting climax to the season. They've been the football powers in the 70s, with two premierships each in this decade. It's Hawthorne's third grand final in four years, all against North Melbourne, and it's North Melbourne's sixth in a row, allowing for the replay that they had and won last year. At the end of the 22 home and away games, the teams were level on competition points, and North Melbourne finished on top only by percentage. So let's go, the 1978 VFL Grand Final from the opening bounce and with me, Peter Booth and Doug Haywood. The 1978 Grand Final is underway. Bad bounce, it breaks uh, to the right. It goes to Blight across to Nolan. Henry's free kick against Melrose. No, umpire Robinson, Robinson says mine. Up goes Scott, but taken by Nolan, taken away by Alves, up towards half-forward. Dippier Domenico. Domenico up towards centre-half-forward, Moncrief in front and takes a good mark. And 15 metres as well, I would say. And this will bring Moncrief only 25 metres out from goal. 25 seconds of play, and Hawthorne has the chance to score. Moncrief right in front. 25 metres out, main scoreboard end. It's a goal. Hawthorne's first score. Hawthorne, one goal. North Melbourne get the score in the first quarter. I suggest that's the most typical free kick you'll ever see in a grand final, or the 15 metres in the first quarter. And there's Moncrief, a little cuff around the ear. It wasn't all that serious. But there is not the slightest doubt that umpires in the first quarter of a grand final establish their discipline and do everything they can to indicate the players don't go off. And there was that 15 metre penalty which Moncrief made certain of. Actually, Keith Gregg is tagging Martello at this stage. The bounce from umpire Robinson. Tuck over the top of Blight. Sutton for North Melbourne, number five. Caught by Tuck. Socket forward by Martello. Moncrief again marks in front of Vendini. What a start for Mike Moncrief. Different story to uh, Peter Moore against North Melbourne last week. Moncrief that front position and doing it well at the moment. Game's been underway only a minute and Mike Moncrief lining up for his second goal. number 88 for the season to Michael Moncrief and fortune favours the brave he's been in front but just just a few feet look at that free kick to Ali DeWald on half back flank fourth on two goals North Melbourne one behind Montgomery from the side won't take it forced to ground Wallace is there number 16 still battling out the Manane taken by uh, Hawthorne up towards half forward and the mark taken by Henshaw between centre half back and full back. Henshaw out to the outer side. Good lead offered by Alves just behind centre wing. He can draw a man and put it over the top, which he does to John Byrne. He's fumbling. A solid mark loses control of it. And in come Hawthorne. Dippier Domenico is going well towards centre half forward. Matthews at the back of him, Henshaw. Well played, Ross Henshaw. Leaves it for Glenn Dinning. Straight up the centre of the ground. It's unmarked through the centre. Long kick by Glenn Dinning. Baker with a run at them. Good leap. Melrose a snap for goal. And he's put it through. And North go to 1-1. Hawthorne, two goals. And Phil Baker. Looks to me as a player somewhat out of form. He's not judging his leaps. That was fairly close. Nicely judged by Melrose. A very important goal to North Melbourne. 
Bad bounce again. Tuck thumps it downfield. Keith Gregg, you're in trouble. There's Belgal. Great pace for a big fellow. Glenn Denny, a very awkward bounce. Moncrief with him all the way. Ooh, a bit slow on the hand pass. Out to Henshaw. Back to Sutton. Sutton looks to give it to Alves or Kelton. Bad bounce for Alves. Running over. Here comes Lethal Lee. Good pump by Alves against him. Beautifully done. And left foot to out of danger. That was great football. Knights and McCann. And behind the play. John Henry is being spoken to. And the free kick will be paid down for can just on the attacking side of centre for the advantage free kick. Hawthorne two goals, North Melbourne one goal one. Twelve minutes into this 1978 BFL Grand Final, a great kick. Baker from behind sets himself, can't mark it this time, it spills to boys. This will be a miracle goal, but it's not, it's a behind. North Melbourne one goal two, Hawthorne two goals. Henry leading from the centre. Moore going towards the outer side of the ground for Tuck. Knight's also flying down to Wallace at half-back. Tackled when he didn't have it, and the free kick to Terry Wallace. First-year player who's played all games this year for Hawthorne. Up towards centre wing. Nobody there for the Hawks. And the mark should have been taken by Montgomery, who was a star last week. Manane's kick up to the forward pocket. Moncrief the danger man. Glendinning in the first 13 minutes. That was really the best one of the lot too, wasn't it? It was a magnificent mark. There it is. He's out manoeuvred him and grabbed it. Six foot three and a half is Michael Moncrief. Never been a fierce competitor, but today he certainly is. Moncrief kicked two goals in the first minute. Coming up now for his third goal. Pretty close, but just offline. But he scored all of Hawthorne's score. Two goals, one. There's Mark Moncrief, who almost notched the century of goals there a couple of years ago. That was in 1976. Glenn Denning kicking out quickly. Al Shelton from the sun. Nick Nolan thumps it off the ground. He says, what's that all about, umpire? The umpire says, it's quite quiet, Nick. I've given the free kick, and that's all there is to it. And it's booted down there by Walter. In front, Moncrief again. Behind is Henshaw. Beautifully smothered by Russo. Out of bounds. Hawthorne in attack. 2-1 to 1-2 in the forward pocket. <laughs> Bound umpire waiting patiently. It's a magnificent crowd. And that uh, policeman waiting very patiently. Hawthorne 2 1 13, North Melbourne 1 2 8. 14 minutes played in the 1978 VFL Grand Final. And where's the ball? It's been lost. Now here it comes now. Hawthorne's left forward pocket, city end, underneath the main scoreboard. Nolan and Scott. Scott got the tap down. There's Henshaw. Just scoops the ball on, and it's out of bounds again. This time just about three or four metres closer to Hawthorne's goal. Nolan and Scott. Scott easily, but down to Henshaw, which wasn't good play. That's Sutton. Around the member side, the ball bouncing free for the moment. Over the boundary line for yet another throw in. Boyce couldn't control the ball because Pockenhorn was very close handy to him. Throw in, right half forward for Hawthorne. Martello wins. His opponent is Greg. He should have. Manane for Hawthorne. Straight kick, which is long. Moncrief there again. Glendinning in front. Down to Henry. A snap for goal. Is blocked by uh, Glendinning. Scott has a snap. Well, as a point of statistical interest only, that's Don Scott's 100th goal in league football. And what a beauty. Henry's kick smothered by Glendinning. It bounced back for Don Scott. And a left foot snap by the big fella. Straight through. What a magnificent goal, and like most great players, there it is. I think he enjoyed that. When you need him, he's at his best. Richard Walter will do battle with the Mel. What a terrible bounce once again. Bang, they go down. Well done, Big Mick. Underneath a Johnny Byrne, but Kelvin Moore comes in and pushes him away. Nicely done. Huppets straight through with a left foot snap. And there's the little man. That's his fourth kick. 
Penny great goal. 3-1 Hawthorne. 2-2 two -two to North Melbourne. Biggest man in league football, Mick Nolan, in against Don Scott. Bounce favour Scott. Oh, Nolan into his back, but it comes to Russo. Is caught by Byrne. Took a long time for the whistle coming, and it'll be another baller. Scott got pretty high, but Nolan cleaned possession. And then kick forward by Wallace. Short of half forward. Awkward bounce for Hendry. Chance for Martello. A driving right foot kick. Moncrief there again, but Glenn Dinning staying down. Took the mark. Yes. Yes, he did, Drew. He just held it on second right before. Was certainly Ross Glenn Dinning's. Out wide. Looking for Tanner. Well played Wallace as he outmaneuvered him. Then punched away by Tanner eventually. Fumbled. And free kick is going to go to the Hawthorne camp, Peter Russo. And a good little rover. In front, Walter. Behind is Henshaw. Short pass to Alves. A bit dangerous this time. Alves and his opponent, Bob um, Ede. Ede will have a shot for goal and will kick it. Well, how easily is one fatal slip? converted into a catastrophe for the other side. Alves had the opportunity from a reasonably well-directed pass. Here it comes. Henshaw to Alves. Alves slips now at the crucial time. Ede, a very accomplished player, makes the best of that slip. Watch him line it up with great surety and wham! That was beautifully done, Rodney Ede. Eight minute mark, second quarter, Hawthorne 40, North Melbourne 21, umpire Della, Walter the Tap, Montgomery, scrubby old kick to Pia Domenico, oh, beautifully done, and a spearing kick up towards full forward, Moncrief, but hands to it, oh, Hendry juggled it, Glenn Dinning onto Martello, good tackle by Glenn Dinning, Martello had his name on that, 70 sights on the goals, and a great tackle by Ross Glenn Dinning, It'll be a ball up 25 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. Could nearly have been rewarded for that tackle. Martello's killing, Greg. Hawthorne in attack. Scott over the top of Nolan. Straight down towards... Uh, well, that's Scott there. Through goes Huppets. Handballs dangerously. Matthews almost took clean possession in the goal square, but Henshaw from the back pocket. Alves and E. Half forward for Hawthorne. Alves centres the ball well for Tuck. Alves is cramped. Well, pulled the fine muscle. Mm, I think he's done something to his muscle. That's more than cramp, I think. Long kick by Michael Tuck. That covers about 70 metres. Scott is there. Yep. Paid the mark. Scotty holds his arms aloft. And Don Scott a chance to kick his second goal as Stan Alves. At 32, the oldest man on the ground looks pretty dejected as he leaves the ground to be interchanged with Doug Smith. Don Scott from his first mark. A chance for his second goal. Can't see very much daylight between the posts. Certainly with Mick Nolan standing in front of them. A good kick. Goss bursting at centre bounce there to get his first touch in the grand final. Richard Walter and Mick Nolan. Walter went far too early. Here comes Goss. Well done. Battles and fights it. Should have been a free to Montgomery. It is a free. Montgomery kick his first kick. Best man on the ground last week out to Smith, the winger, at six foot four. The left footer kicks it very nicely down the direction of Stephen McCann. Knight's too early. Great judgment by boys. Takes them up. Well, the, the leaper. Well done, boys. You're in trouble with Tuck now. Across to Johnny Byrne. Byrne will be tackled by Goss. Then boots for goal and does it very nicely. Just missed. Bad luck, John Byrne. He ran into all sorts of trouble in the person of Hawthorne opponents and one behind. Hawthorne 7 4, North Melbourne 3 4. Elf's going off the ground. He won't come back, I wouldn't think. I would say he's declared uh, his presence left today. 
Kelvin Moore. And towards Doug Smith, number 46. A bit of shoving going on. The umpire was there, but couldn't see it. There's Ede. In towards Matthews. Greg chips in. No count and takes a good mark. Tons of support. No, no hand pass required. Oh, Schimmelbusch, uh, Schimmelbusch gets a shove and will take the free kick. Out of side wing against Jeff Ablett. Play slowed down, which suits Hawthorne. Shimmer. And towards McCann. Walter behind. Oh, boys read it beautifully. Fires for goal. And it's a goal. A beautiful goal by Boris. Goal number one to Boris Boys. His sixth kick at North Melbourne's fourth goal at the 13-minute mark in the second quarter. Hawthorne, 7-4, 46. North Melbourne, 4-4, 28. Read the play beautifully, Morris boys. He certainly did. That was magnificent. Fiddling, hopeless football, and they've lost it. Tucker's got it. Back to Matthews. Matthews, a bullet pass to Martello. Counton recovers it nicely. Always a good finals player. Oh, bang! You missed him. Picked up by Casson. Casson high in the air. Gains little with that one. Well done, Walters. He thumps it down towards Dipper Domenico. He's tackled. Picked up by Byrne. Byrne screws it across. Baker's chance once again. This is a magnificent exhibition. You've got plenty of reason to be happy, Phil Baker. A magnificent exhibition of marking as he takes mark number five. For most, you'd call it point-blank range. Phil Baker puts it through for his second. Look at him, saying to Peyton, he loves to argue. Johnny Byrne, that won't help you much. Fourth on by 10 points, umpire Della. Burns kicks mothered by Knights. Tuck, the usual type of tuck kick out of the centre, scrambly kick. Renane can't trap it. There's Montgomery. Support from Cashin. Hurried kick, going to bounce free. Over the top, yes it goes. Catterwood boys, it was Baker, open goal, number three. But he is loving it. Look at Phil Baker. The importance of moving the ball quickly to break up defence. A prime example by North Melbourne. Baker, an easy catch, only eight metres out from goal, and banked it through for North Melbourne sixth. Hit. Nolan against Walter. Nolan wins. Hard ball for Melrose. <laughs> and caught holding the ball, and the free kick goes to Norm Goss, who was in a lot of doubt for this game. He missed two finals games after playing all the home and away games. Goss's kick inside half forward. Moncrief and Glenn Denning at the back, Cowton. He slips it across to Henshaw, and now to Byrne. And North Melbourne's flow on game is starting to work. Schimmelbush marks again in front of uh, Abbott. Handball to Smith going past. Oh, the big fella goes for a bounce. Well played, Doug Smith. Baker at the back again. And Brightus spoiled him. Well, Arnold Brightus, who's totally lost touch, would have been far better to leave that to Phil Baker. Well called, Drew. Well, he well would have, Drew. He should have marked it, of course, too, in his own defence, because he got there and two hands to it. But uh, certainly Baker was poised in a perfect position. Baker does the leaping. Well played, boys, again. Beautifully out wide to Sutton, who's now at centre-half forward. Sutton was tackled and made no effort to put ball to hand or foot, so the free kick is against him. And who's taking it? That blocky strong man, Diapia Domenico. He tries a hand pass to Goss. Cleverly out to uh, half-back flank. Long run by Walter. By uh, DeWald. Out to Eid. Eid downfield. Kelton in great position again. Martello been a great centre half forward. Well played, Huppets. Well played, Martello. Endeavour plus personified by both, it will be bounced. Fourth on by four points at the 25 minute mark in the second quarter. Scott and Nolan. Nolan, I think. Huppets, a bit of courage there as Martello came in from the side. A free kick to Huppets. Ruled by umpire Robinson. Now it's going the other way. For Scott. He must have uh, 
squatted on the ball, made no effort to get rid of it, apparently, because he was on haunches when the free kick was given. Scott, scrappy old kick, Nolan underneath it. Henshaw, final experience there. Scott again, Casson Bassard. Great mark by Scott. The free kick was going to be paid anyway for over the left ear, I'd say. But a great example of what a captain should be, Don Scott. Kick number six. Scrappy old one to the pocket. Knocked away by Greg from Martello, and it's out of bounds in the left forward pocket. Hawthorne into attack. Hawthorne, 46. North Melbourne, 42. Nolan, down towards Huppets. Up short of the centre, Tuck should mark. Misses it. Overrun by Conkinghorn. Picked up at the back by Boys of North Melbourne. He's had a great quarter. Baker again! mark for the quarter after he'd had only one kick in the first quarter and Phil Baker now lining up for his fourth goal for the quarter to put North Melbourne in front and he's done it well for an Easter player Doug that can really lift North Melbourne can't he? Oh it's one of the most thrilling exhibitions this quarter by Baker that one could see in a final it's Reminiscent of the Coleman's and the Pratt's and anyone you like to know. Five minutes gone. Third quarter. Barassi shouting instructions. Wallace right into the teeth of goals. Walter is there. Comes off the hands. A chance here for Martello. What an agile goal for a big fella. First goal to Alan Martello. And he was virtually running away from goals and put it over his left shoulder. The score shows Hawthorne 8-4 to North Melbourne 8-10. So the match is still wide open at the seven-minute mark of the third turn. Here's Matthews to take the free kick. He'll be doing everything in his power to inspire the team in this term. Across it goes to Wallace. Didn't gain much for the side then. Wallace downfield. In front is Moncrief, punched away. Martello pushed by his teammate, left foots it along, here comes Glenn Denning, hasn't made a mistake. Out to Henshaw, clever hand pass to Montgomery. Montgomery dodges and twists and doesn't do it all that well. Bounces past everybody, a chance is there now for Dipper Domenico, one of Hawthorne's best. Punched away and here's a chance for Big Al again. Screws it back with a very big kick and through for one behind. And Hawthorne still in attack, advanced to 8-5, North Melbourne 8-10. Eight minute mark for this third quarter. Henshaw fumbles badly. Could be over. Yes, it is. Bad fumble by Henshaw. Doesn't fumble very often. But the pass wasn't good from Glenn Denning for a start. North by five points. Nolan and Scott in ruck. Tuck screws it back. Eyes on the ball. It's bouncing free towards the boundary line. It'll go over. The Smith can't get there in time. The boundary throw in on the right side of the behind post. Members stand in. Scott and Nolan. Scott Easley, who too though. Glenn Denning slips. Matthews dodges out of trouble. Great goal. Magnificent stuff by Lee Matthews. Gee, John Byrne was standing right under the goal post and he's arguing with the goal umpire. Matthews' second goal, surrounded by North Melbourne players. A tremendous amount of agility for a fellow as thickly set as he is. Hawthorne back in front and leading by a point. Nolan out of the centre. Dippia Domenico again goes straight through them. Magnificent football. He's kicked to half forward. Scott's there. Smith at the back. In goes Eade. A chance for Scott again. Great agility. Unmarked is Martello. Gets the handball infield to Hendry. A snap for goal is bad. And brings up a behind. Very quiet play, Drew. John Hendry. Six kicks to Hendry. Here comes the Grecian god, Mr. Ross Glendinning. Wallace should mark it. <coughs> he does. Wallace puffing the cheeks, as he so often does. Out to Hendry. Henry tries, but doesn't help Moncrief much. Henshaw's above him. 
Moncrief, after a magnificent first turn, has halted. There's Stephen McCann. Waiting to be summoned onto the ground once again, and in come the Ruckman. Martello screws for goal and hooks it back too far. Another behind off the boot of Big Al. Hawthorne by three points. Glenn Dinning, they haven't been marking the kicks in, North Melbourne. Let's see what happens this time. Free kick, no. Martello nicely done. Russo, a fumble, but it wasn't a good hand pass. It was at Russo's feet when he tried to plug it in. Here's Ray Jordan, assistant coach at North Melbourne. John Dugdale, Ron Barassi. And McCann is uh, coming on the field for North, and Brightus, funnily enough, is going off. It's a big move by Ron Barassi. Caught. Greg. From half back out to the wing. Uh, now it's Big Ball that got the sun in his eyes, but he's still going well. Get encouragement from his teammates, Ede, if he can pick it up. Dippy and Domenico, what a tremendous, what a superb game he's played. Big Scott, Matthews in front. Three players uh, flew for it, in fact four. And I thought at the last moment that Matthews may stay down. He might get the call from Scott to stay down, but he didn't. And that's the result. And there's the goal. Goal number 10 to Hawthorne. 10-7-67 to North Melbourne. 8-10-58. The biggest lead in the game to date was Hawthorne's 25-point lead in the second quarter. Walter wins the ruck. Knights breaks away with pace. Good football, Peter Knights. Drives it long, but it's over the head of Moncrief. Scott was there as well. And the ball out of bounds in the forward pocket for a throw in. Hawthorne back into attack. 12 minutes gone, third quarter. Interesting to reflect after all the stories about Matthews being shadowed. There's been no permanent shadow on his shoulder. Maybe there should have been. In comes Scott, gets front position with great skill, and gets free kick for someone too. No, he doesn't. Uh, yes, he does, of course. Sorry. I saw McNolan. But he got front position beautifully, almost pushed himself underneath his arms. He's kicked two. This will be his eighth kick and a chance for his third goal. Well, Nolan on the mark is only about 10 metres out, so Don Scott should manage to kick his own third goal. Now that looked like a footballer, Captain Courageous, and he kicks his own third goal. And what a seesawing match it's been. At quarter time, the difference was 19 points in favour of Hawthorne. And as Drew said, they actually got away to 25 points. North Melbourne led by four points at half time, and now North have gone away to a lead of 15 points. Empire Robinson, Hawthorne lead by 15 points. Nolan and Walter in ruck. Well, Nolan, a nice palm, taken by Melrose. Sutton behind. Oh, he should be paid it. He was behind. Dippy the Medico says no. But calling it from sight, not from the monitor, I thought that Sutton really had the best of that. And one has to be sure when you call somebody who's going from behind. The man behind is paid probably only once or twice out of ten. Sutton, 40 metres out, almost in front. It's offline. Blight is down there. He hasn't done much. There's more. And it's out of bounds in the right forward pocket. And North Melbourne has a chance to score in this third quarter. McCann and Walter. Pretty congested pack. Payton comes out with it, but only to Huppets. He's still in the forward pocket. A snap for goal by Huppets. This is pretty close. Gee, not a bad kick. Under pressure too, Drew. It wasn't a bad effort at all. Two goals, one to Ray Huppets. And Blight has just faded completely out of the game. A real non-entity at this stage, Malcolm Blight. Shielding eyes from the sun is that great fullback Kelvin Moore as he boots out wide. Knights was a magnificent leap. Kelton a lightning hand pass. Melrose in lots of trouble, swapped. Hit out nicely there by battling Wallace. Wallace out to the half forward line at Martello. Great football. Sutton's his opponent now, been switched back there. Here's Henry got the chance. He can go on with it. 
Well, screws it back looking for Ablett. It was actually pretty well directed. Ablett steadies, shoots for goal, and thank you. Right through. Right through. Matthews comes across to Kelton, showing a lot of displeasure at that stage. But that was a great kick by Jeff Ablett. And it was screwed across by the left footer, Henry. And Hawthorne looking very good. And Malcolm Blight has been taken off the ground. Paced by Brightus. Malcolm Blight has had only five kicks for the game. Thought he might be hanging that right arm a little too as he went off. Walter wins the centre bounce. Tuck. Short kick upfield. Marks fumbles off his chest. Chance for McCann as he gets it back to Sutton. Sutton out to the wing for Cowton. They'll have to run for that one. And the ball beats them over the line, out of bounds. If, in fact, Blight is injured, they now have Blight and Owls both injured. With the quarter and a half to go, Nolan and Walter. <laughs> High tackle on Huppets, and he'll take the free kick. A five goal to one third quarter by Hawthorne so far. Huppets between centre wing and half back flank. Back where McCann and Knights will compete. Look at the leap of Knights as he thumps it away out towards Wallace. Casson shows more pace. Casson's kick dribbling along beside the boundary line eventually goes out of bounds on half forward flank. With North Melbourne in attack and desperately needing a score as they're trailing by 20 points. Walter. Picked up nicely by Melrose. Turns, twists, looks for somebody. Back it goes, looking for Baker. Well played, Moore. Oh, he's a magnificent mark, is Kelvin Moore. And Phil Baker hasn't had the chance to crawl up his back and take any spectaculars. At one stage, 18 shots to 11 in uh, North Melbourne's favour. Now it's 19 shots to 19 apiece. So Hawthorne have really come back in this grand final. Hendry, wrong-footed. Kicks well. Martello sandwiched. Huppets, hurried kick, who to? Knights backing back. Out to Casson. Any support there? There's none. In the centre half for Walter by himself. And Hawthorne supremely on top at the moment. He's at half back. Into the centre. Nobody there for the moment. It'll bounce free. Bad bounce for Matthews. Soccer by Martello. Down to Scott. Support from Ablett. He doesn't need it at the moment. Sutton gives him a push. There's Sutton still playing it. Scott after him, but Sutton does it nicely. Over the Huppets, in trouble. Back to Sutton again. Hurried kick. Payton dropped the sitter. Gets a bit of a shove. Lead nicely. Matthews in front. Henshaw disgusted with himself. Mark number four to Lee Matthews. He's 35 metres out from goal. He's kicked three. Sport. And that's three in this quarter, and the quarter's only gone 18 minutes to the boot of Matthews. Six goals to one in this third quarter by Hawthorne. They're 13 7 85 to North Melbourne, 8 11 59. Glenn Dinning run, or you'll lose it. Get out of the road boundary umpire. Glenn Dinning, <coughs> very graceful player. Martello should have held that big owl, but recovers brilliantly. Boots them or thumps them into attack. Underneath it, Henshaw takes the mark. A very reliable player today on the Huppets in trouble. Burn could be all oh, high tackle free kick. Burn at centre half back. Nobody to kick it to for the moment. Yes, Melrose. That's his target. Graham Melrose, number 17. Bad bounce. Russo there. In board towards Sutton, who's done a power of work. The mark was taken by Wallace. We're playing well to be at Domenico. The centre half forward, the punch. Manane on his right foot. It's bending around. It's a goal. And that's the seal. The first goal in the game to Peter Manane. A fairly quiet player. But Hawthorne's persistency, their drive, they've never give up situation really setting them on the path to the 1978 flag Hawthorne 17 10 112 North Melbourne 11 13 79 
33 points, the biggest lead in the game to date. Nolan out of the centre, but Tuck sharks it for Hawthorne. Montgomery fighting hard with Manane, who kicked the last goal from only his seventh kick. Good handball to Wallace. Wallace, a long, high kick. Moncrease there with Glendinning. Matthews comes in. Left forward pocket. The ball out of bounds for a throw in. When Matthews comes in, he comes in 102%. Came in very, very fiercely. Matthews and Knights have given Scott have given their usual great contribution. Ablett, Henry, trouble for Henry. Matthews screws it down, through for one behind. 4-2 to Matthews, 4-2. Three magnificent goals in the third term. Shibblebush is cramped. Glenn Dinning kicks in. Out to Cowton. Jim and Duell here. Cowton behind, claims it, and will get it. Surprising. Henshaw going past. It's hecked out of play in. Looks for Doug Smith, but oh, good punch by Martello at half back. On to Brightus. Dip it in over his shoulder. Nicely done by Payton. Out to Wallace. Almost pressed on the ground to Russo. A ton of time. Shimmerbush still in the hands of the trainers. Moncrief. Matthews where he should be. Tripped up. Has a quick look. Fires away and misses. Four goals, three to lethal. He's asking the umpire too. Tapping his leg and saying to the umpire, where's my free kick? And I think there was a chance it was on too. Glendinning for North, towards the outer side for Cowton, with Hendry, Hendry spoiling, and the ball out of bounds, and Hawthorne don't mind that. The more time the ball spends in the gutter, the better for the Hawks. Right half forward for Hawthorne, Scott over the top of Nolan, Montgomery fumbling, Russo in there with him, and a ball up. minutes played last quarter. Scott over the top of Nolan again, but it comes straight to McCann. On to Casson at half back. Casson out towards the wing. Brightus in front of Dippier Domenico, and that's a rarity, and Brightus marks. Yes, I think that sums up the battle. Dippier Domenico has been in front so often and so effectively. Out to Casson. Oh, bad Miss Payton. Redeemed by Kelvin Moore. Underneath it, the little fellows. Huppets beautifully done. Beautifully done. Great judgment. Puppet straight to Martello. Baker goes up above him. Polkinghorn boots it out only about 15 metres. Chance for Doug Smith, who's been a very good player. With his left foot, Kelvin Moore takes the mark, and off he goes. Around the member side wing. Looking for Hendry, right on his chest, I'd say. No, not quite. Your players are really having to stretch themselves. They're finding it pretty hard at the moment. Tanner to Cowton onto Schimmelbush, who's up from cramp. And here's a chance for Baker. Shepard it off. And so he didn't contest that mark. And that's Payton at fullback. Hawthorne 114, North Melbourne 79. And Hawthorne playing out time, playing it wide. Nolan. And Scott puts Huppets down. Should I say Schimmelbush? Big Mick. Centers it. They're going in front of... Oh, Baker! He's kicked five. And that's his ninth mark. I noticed just before they were walking in front of him, before the ball was delivered, to keep him from getting that big spring. But not on that occasion. And that's his sixth goal and North Melbourne's twelfth. Five, six goals, two to Phil Baker. He's done a great job, hasn't he? He'd have to go down as North Melbourne's best, I think. Bounce in the centre again. Scott beats Nolan once more. Matthews, after a quiet first quarter, he's really killed them late after that. Knights, great mark, and he plays on, and Peter Knights kicks a goal. And ran about 30 metres. <laughs> Was out on his feet after two minutes in this last quarter and has bounced back to kick two goals to really seal it for the Hawks. From the bounce, Scott will go vigorously, does it. Taken this time by Glendinning. In the 
brightest direction coming out to dispute it is Peyton. Peyton mishandled it. Brightest punches down to Smith. Smith then shoots it for goal. Oh, well, it's a good looking kick. It was a great kick. It was a great kick. He's played very, very well as Doug Smith, and that's his second goal. Hawthorne, 18 12, 120. North Melbourne, 13 13, 91. We played 23 minutes. With Nolan in ruck from the left of your screen and Walter from the right. David Parkin was looking pretty happy at the moment, I'd say. Wallace again. Out to Aid. Hatter's on the wing now on Aid. Hendry not quite. And it's out of bounds on Hawthorne's left half forward flank. Last quarter, Hawthorne has scored four goals to North Melbourne's three, but of course Hawthorne led by 22 points at three-quarter time. They're 18-12, 120, North Melbourne 13-13, 91 at the 24-minute mark. Scott and Nolan. Ablett, Schimmelbush, tap it on to Tanner if he can. Well, that's the desperation of North. I just won't let that ball go leg, Schimmelbush. He likes to play on to Melrose to turn his back on it. Tuck comes in. There's Tanner, very quiet player. Melrose gets a call from Montgomery. It's almost a smother by Murnayan. It's the flick of the ball away. Tuck, that's a ball up here shortly. No, Casson, out to Smith. Oh, he left it behind. No, he recovers. Ablett, almost the wrong way. Across the centre, but it's all Hawthorne. There's a million of them here. Lee Matthews. Ninth kick for the quarter for Lee Matthews. Moncrief at half forward. He ducked his head at the last moment and allowed the mark to be taken by Sutton at the back. Greg just behind centre wing out of side. Hawthorne by 29 points. Glenn Dinning. Collared by Knights. Lost the ball on the tackle and the umpire rules he didn't have the ball when he was tackled. And the free kick goes to Ross Glenn Dinning. Mm. <laughs> Peter Knights looks horrified and so are you, Drew. <laughs> Glendinning from centre wing, a long kick. Baker, another run at them. It clears the pack. Huppets slides it across to Brightus. An open goal for Arnold Brightus, and bang! Second goal to Brightus. Been eight goals kicked in the last quarter. There'll be a bit of time on. Only four goals wanted. Yes, just 23 points the difference. Four goals would put them in front. And there's one who appreciates it. He's back in the centre. And he's got his vice captain roving too. Well done, Mick Nolan. Murnane in trouble. Good player, Kelton. Out in the Schimmelbush direction, which is the right direction for North Melbourne. He makes a mistake about every second match. That's right. He says, get back, Ablett. Montgomery, not a good hand pass. Well, the umpire, strangely enough, has let that sort of thing go all day. But now Schimmelbush has got to come back and take his kick, and Henry's on the mark which holds up play which doesn't suit the northerners short pass is a good one to melrose Ooh, danger to henshaw danger real danger and they've lost it picked up and booted down by Manane. here's henry and the hawks are swooping into attack gives it to walter walter oh he fumbled badly mccann picks him up henry's got the chance as Kelton pursues him henry kicks across to russo russo fumbles Picked up there by Melrose, and out of danger it goes. Up towards Huppets in the centre. Oh, he's wrong-footed, but goes out wide to Brightus. Dip in the Minico. No, no one can mark it. Goes down to Boys, who's been pretty quiet. Strokes the tackle. Lines up from 35 metres out. Fires, and it's a goal to North Melbourne. That's their 15th. We've played 26 minutes in this last quarter. That's uh, the second to Boys. And I would say there's about four or five minutes of play remaining and still plenty of time for North Melbourne to get up, although really, overall, they haven't been the better team on the day. And can kick three. Hawthorne added only a behind, and they won the game by three goals, 18-13 to 15-13, and the fourth premiership to Hawthorne. For them, Moncrief and Matthews each kicked four goals, Scott three and Knights two, and the leading goal kickers for North, Baker kicked six, and two each to Brightus, Huppets, Boys and Smith. Well, North Melbourne's coach Ron Barassi uh, couldn't quite work his magic in his 50th finals appearance, both as a player and a coach. He's been associated with 10 premiership sides, but not this one. In the rooms after the game, Barassi speaks with Doug Mason. Ron, it looked as though you had a good chance at half-time going in in front. Uh, what made the wheels fall off in the third quarter? 
Uh, well, I suppose uh, it was partly due to our own play and partly due to um, Hawthorne's play. We had the ascendancy just after half time too. Uh, and I think uh, we failed to keep it for as long as we should have when Huppert, Sand, Baker collided in the, in the goal spread. That, you know, absolute certain goals, only inches out. Uh, we made a mistake in the back line, and from then on, Hawthorne seemed to, to gain the momentum. And uh, well, I never looked back for that rest of that quarter, and we, we really struggled. Uh, we came back in the last quarter. Uh, but I think we were undermanned, and Hawthorne, you know, they jumped out the gun, as you saw at the start of the first quarter. They had good players sprinkled all over the ground, whereas we didn't have many good players. A lot of players who shone for, you know, 10 minutes here and 15 minutes there. But in a grand final, you need a, a bigger effort than that. Uh, Hawthorne won well, but I was proud of the way the boys fought out. They never gave in at any stage. Malcolm Blight, uh, you took him off the ground. He obviously must have sustained some sort of an injury. Yes, yes, he uh, pulled a... Uh, a groin muscle or a stomach muscle or something of that nature. Was, we tried him out to half time, uh, but you know, it was, it was useless so I had to bring him off. A lot of your younger players seem to be uh, not sort of more overawed by the occasion today. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, we haven't got any young players or many young players. Smith's a young one. He, you know, he did well when he came on. Uh, Boyce uh, kicked a couple of goals. Uh, I don't know who else you mean, Doug. Well, I just thought uh, well, who? Yeah, well, oh, Stephen McCann uh, didn't play as usual. Sorry, McCann, yes. No, McCann didn't play well, but then McCann hasn't played quite well. a, a really good game for oh, maybe a couple of months. Uh, if other things had been so, we wouldn't have, you know, he wouldn't have got a game. Uh, he fought it out, but it's one, one thing too. Ross Clendinning, after a very patchy start, and I was quite proud of his uh, game, because it was pretty unnerving for a, a new fullback in, a, in his first VFL grand final to get two goals kicked on him in the first, what, three minutes? That's right. Uh, and he fought back that magnificently after that. Ron Hawthorne aren't to be caught They were uh, relentless all day, and uh, we came at them a couple of times, as you mentioned, uh, but they were always brought back, and uh, they were the worthy winners on the day. Well, even at the finish you were going on, Ron, do you think the match last week uh, was a pretty physical affair? Had uh, any effect on your players towards the end? Uh, oh, yes, a little bit, but... Probably a greater effect was the fact we couldn't share the workload uh, from, from our bench. We had, we had 18. And in a grand final, we always used 20, particularly interchange. Uh, we couldn't run them on off the bench and give them the rest. Uh, so, because of Els and uh, Blight. So it made it accentuated the probably situation. Well, congratulations anyway. Six grand finals in five years is a magnificent effort. Uh, I suppose already you are starting to, when you, as soon as you drown your sorrows, you'll be starting to look forward to 1979. Yes, uh, that's one thing you learn from defeat, is to, it gives you a sharper edge for the following year. This is the, uh, I think, the third, third or fourth time I've been involved in the Premiership uh, and not one of the next year. I can't find, seem to find that uh, elusive double. But, uh, so I've got, now I've got, got to wait till 1980 to get that double. The work on that mental attitude uh, over the summer, because it's obviously not a oh. fitness. No, it wasn't fitness. Uh, we, we were we were under man we felt uh, we've got to look i won't talk any more about that because that's our own business uh, where we think we, our weaknesses are as, uh, as i said before and i don't want to go away from here from the viewers without saying that i was very proud of the boys and uh, again I, on behalf of the north melbourne football club i congratulate hawthorne for their good year and magnificent uh, win north coach ron barassi still done a great job in the last five years north have been premiers twice and runners up three times hawthorne's coach david parkin was captain in hawthorne's 1971 premiership year and now after taking over from his mentor john kennedy he coaches his first premiership team here he is with jeff leek well david you're in a throng of very uh, loyal supporters at the moment an ecstatic uh, but congratulations to you personally on your first uh, premiership as coach well, i did, did very little jeff i i thought during the week it would be a, a players game and I don't think that the coaches really played, uh, you know, a real vital role. I thought it'd be, you know, the players would have to see the game through. We didn't make, we personally didn't make all that many changes. The manipulation of players, I believe that we had 20 players who could do the job. And we did a bit of a Collingwood today. We stuck them in their positions and believed them in those positions, basically. I think we only made, you know, one or two changes during the day. And the players realize the potential that I I believe that they had I believe they had it last year and we didn't realize that and that was a bit of disappointment to me I I suppose I one of the rare blokes who inherited a premiership side 
sure. and the sorts of things that Kennedy believed in, we've tried to maintain. And I believe the players show the sort of character of that man today, and that's the thing that we we may not have the skill and the and the uh, running ability of some of the other sides and the handball and finesse, but we've got a lot of blokes here who've been imbued with the Kennedy spirit and it's been carried on. And I hope that we'd never lose that and it surfaced again in today, which was the most important time for it to surface. David, when did you think that you had the game won? Yeah, just about that. I, I really thought at three-quarter time, Jeff, when Hawthorne sides are a couple of kicks in front and you can see them there and they get a bit of a sniff, it takes an incredible performance by another team to be able to get over them. Uh, and I, I really thought at three quarter time, we could have lost it even still, I think we could have lost it. So I think at three quarter time I, I was convinced inside, without showing it outwardly, that we could win the game. Were you a little bit worried in the second quarter when North overhauled you and got in front and your stars like well, Matthews and Knights and say uh, Tuck, some of the other good players uh, were not getting into the game? Yeah, we were very worried at half Well, I was personally worried at half time because... What did uh, you say to them? Oh, no, I think I appealed to the... Uh, to their better nature, the sort of people that we do have here. We didn't say, we, we did three or four fundamental things and it's fundamentals that usually win finals and we, uh, we talked about those, mainly forwards who had won the ball so well in the first quarter, who had placed enormous pressure on their opponents as the ball was coming out of the forward line. Didn't do it in the second quarter. Neither did they win it and neither did they put any pressure on them. But after half time, they did the same sorts of things that they did in the first quarter. Maybe not as well because the opposition were playing well, but they put in in that way, which I think enabled us to win. And why did you switch Martello and Peter Knights in the last quarter? Well, only we, we were forced to do it when Knights was knocked out. Knights went down concussed and we were forced to play Martello there. And in fact, in an indirect sort of way, it, it helped it worked, us because yeah. Martello did better at centre-half back. And Knights went down and did two of the most incredible things I've seen for a long while, yeah. two of which resulted in goals and probably gave us just a little lift at the moment that we required. I suppose you're very proud of your heroes at this stage. Would you like to uh, eulogise any, anyone's performance in particular? Oh, no, we, I, no, I, the player, I've spoken to the players and uh, the, I was very proud, I think, as people close to the club would know, that they've done a tremendous amount in the preparation this year. We demand a lot from our players off the field now as well as on the field and they've certainly measured up and I couldn't have asked for better support. Uh, what I would like to say is that the support I get, particularly from my coaches, we've got a tremendous bunch where John O'Mahony and uh, Johnny Burt and Peter Shockman and... Uh, uh, and so et cetera, et cetera. Well, and yeah. the chairman of selectors, Ken Herbert, who it works diligently for ours to get us the right sort of preparation. They're the sort of people, because we are a team both on and off the field, that have enabled us to get the result on the board. David, is the side sticking together as a group? You're not losing anyone for next season? Well, that's... We haven't had that problem in the past, Jeff, and I hope that that's still the strength of Hawthorne, that the players will want to stay and be a part of this club because of the nature of the club. It is a great club. We're a funny mob in lots of ways. We may be not as professional as the side we played against in many ways, but we really do stick together, and I hope that the players will stay with us and do something that we've never been able to do at Hawthorne, that's win two in a row. Hawthorne coach David Parkin, and congratulations to him and his team. Well, now we go to the mark of the year and the goal of the year. During the season, uh, we've, our cameras have caught some great action in VFL football, and last week we left you with the top four marks. Here they are again with our winner. First quarter, back to Wick again. Oh! <laughs> Electrifying play. The wing at half forward, he plays on. Fitzpatrick is back there to serve him, but what a great leap by Moore. Brings the crowd to its feet, and Moore climbing up over the top of Fitzpatrick to mark in the forward pocket. The South, he says to umpire Nash, brilliant football by Bill Nettlefold. He drives it forward. Brightus at the back. Great right mark by Brightus. What a sensational leap by Arnold Brightus in the opening two minutes of this great game. Soared like an eagle. Mackay's uh, at the back. Harms again. Oh, another magnificent mark. That's 70 marks, Jack. His eighth mark. 
And our winner, the Collingwood forward, Peter Moore, a big man, six feet six, leaping over six feet five, Mike Fitzpatrick, and finishing straddled on his shoulders, typifying the skills of uh, what makes this game such a great spectacle. And the winner of our competition for the mark of the year was Carol Matthews, who saw the grand final. She comes from Hawthorne, and uh, no doubt she was barracking loudly for the Hawks at the grand final. And congratulations from the many thousands of entries that we received for the competition. And now to the goals. And last week, we left you with the top three. Here they are again. Underneath at Max Jones. Hit it down cleverly to Fields. Fields the left footer. Screws a great goal. Great goal. A really classic and left foot snapshot goal. And you've got to come out, Max Pro. Manasseh beats him for it. Kicks for goal and puts it through. Ditterich behind golf. Ditterich the tap down. Goes in the direction of Ashman. Ashman bangs away at the wind, swinging it back. That is a great goal. And the winner, the Carlton Rover Rod Ashman. It wasn't his natural kicking foot. And for a left footer, a very difficult angle from the left forward pocket and kicking into the breeze. And our winner of the goal of the year competition, Stephen Kennedy from Sale. And we hope that you enjoyed the grand final coming up from Sale. We had so many entries from right around Australia and we really appreciate the response that we had to our competition over the last couple of weeks. Now let's look at some more highlights of the 1978 Grand Final. Hard to get away from Dippier Domenico and he does again. Infield, a chance for Tanner, right on the boundary line. In the goal square is Baker again. But Huppets and Baker spoil each other and the ball goes through for a behind. And he'd need to kick it fairly long out of here, out of defence. Hasn't done too badly with it. Knight's a big fly at the back. Holland up against Scott. The ball hits the ground. Through goes Schimmelbush, showing uh, terrific courage, but it's taken away from him by Wallace. Up towards half forward where Hendry marks. He can play on with nobody on the mark. Hendry drives the goal. What a great kick by John Hendry. There's Big Mick, who hasn't really performed too credibly. 18 and a half stone of him as he comes for the centre bounce against 14 and a half stone of Scotty. Even Stephen, Wallace burrows for it. And does it very, very well. Martello and Sutton. Martello great. Behind is Kelton. Here's Sutton, one of North better players. Sutton back there towards the centre half forward zone. Payton's in great position and marks it. Hawthorne dominating everywhere at the moment. Knights. Fantastic stuff by Knights. A long sparing kick. It's a goal. Line, I think. Taps it to himself and off he goes. Gains a good 20 metres with it. Behind is Hendry. Well taken, Mick Knight. The other side wing nearly three-quarter time. Will be a fairly long quarter. We've had about eight goals scored this turn. Played 30 minutes so far. Baker sets himself and he's out of position. Riders comes in from the side to take a well-timed mark. Huppets is there. Caught by Tuck. Loses the ball. Dippier Domenico once again out of defence. Melrose for North. Oh, he got a bad bounce just at the last minute. Tanner breaks clear, gets it back to uh, Melrose. Now to Smith. A left foot kick by Smith is close. It's a goal. Walter. A call from the name. In towards full court. Knights the leap. Knights the leap. 22 kicks for Wallace. This is Ede putting it forward. Ablett in the same direction as the ball. He gets the bouncing ball back. Has time to steady. Not good defence by North, but it's a bad kick by Ablett. But look at Peter Knights! Well, that was pretty good marking by Peter Knights in the last quarter. Now we go to the mark of the day, and the marking of Phil Baker, particularly in the second quarter, was a highlight of the game. Our only choice for the mark of the day was which one? Hawthorne 46, North Melbourne 42, Nolan down towards Huppets, up short of the centre, Tuck should mark, misses it, overrun by Pockinghorn, picked up at the back by Boys of North Melbourne's had a great quarter, Baker again! Oh, what a mark! Phil Baker is on fire in this quarter, sixth mark for the quarter after he'd had only one kick in the first quarter, and Phil Baker now lining up for his fourth goal for the quarter to put North Melbourne in front. He really was spectacular in the second quarter. And now we go to the leading goal kickers of the year with the final tally, and quite a few of the leaders haven't played in the grand final. Moncrief of Hawthorne did and kicked four to take his total to 70. 
Blight played for North Melbourne and didn't kick a goal, and Lee Matthews for Hawthorne kicked four to go to 71. But the out-and-out -out clear winner was Kelvin Templeton of Footscray, who finished at the end of the home and away games. Well, that's nearly all we have for you for the season. It's our final program for 1978. We hope you've enjoyed the winners this year. We'll be back with you again next year, and we hope you come back too. And we hope that our overseas viewers have enjoyed their taste of a VFL Grand Final. We leave you with the goal of the day, and fittingly, it was kicked by one of the stars of Australian football in Lee Matthews. And finally, a salute to Don Scott and David Parkin and their players in the Year of the Hawks. Members stand in. Scott and Nolan. Scott Easley, who too, though? Glenn Denning slips. Matthews dodges out of trouble. Great goal! Magnificent stuff by Lee Matthews.